Instead of suffering through the YouTube chat, click like and subscribe. Which uh, had a great opener and a, uh, a solid main event, but uh, we also had a lot going very on. Good, very good main event. Middle is the middle. Um, so there's a couple of things before we get to it. Uh, so Kevin Owens did a heel turn. And it's really interesting because he did a heel turn not on TV. He well, it was it was very clever what they did because what they did was they had it happen in a public area. So if you've ever gone to a show, there's always that area where the wrestlers come in and go out. And there's always like tons of fans standing there waiting to see who's going to come in, who's going to come out. And so what happened was they shot the angle there. And so all of these fans filmed it on their phones and they all just blasted it all over social media. So if you were on social media, you saw like 50 different versions of this from 50 different fans putting their videos up on on the Internet. And uh, and so it got a lot of people talking because it was very unique. So I'm sure they're going to uh, blast it all over Raw and SmackDown on uh, Monday and Friday. Well, certainly, certainly SmackDown, but no, I'm sure they'll mention on Raw. Oh, I'm sure they'll, they'll it'll be on Raw. And yeah. Uh, but yeah, he turned on. They had a they had an argument in front of all the fans. You can hear fans screaming at him as they're having this argument, and Kevin ends up shoving him, and Cody's trying to defuse the situation, and then Kevin punches him, beats the hell out of him. They have all the guys come in to break it up. And I uh, thought it was very clever the way they did this. And uh... for, for, for a lot of reasons, I don't know. I mean, there's two things that hit my head and I have not found out exactly. Um, but I probably will by the end of the weekend. The um, It could be Cody because there was a very famous parking lot angle where Ole Anderson beat up Dusty Rhodes in 79-ish. It was 79, early 79. Um and Cody would know about that. But the one that I think is probably the reason is exactly what we've talked about many times, which is that everyone was waiting for it. And if they had done the turn, it was going to be the Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair thing where, you know, Charlotte Flair is the baby face and everyone's going to cheer Becky Lynch for doing it. And the last thing they want, especially because Cody and The Rock are supposed to main event WrestleMania, is for Cody to be put in a position where the fans start booing him as a baby face because they're going to cheer Kevin because the people were just waiting for Kevin to turn. So I'm not saying that they would, that, you know, it would, that, that they necessarily would keep booing Cody, but Kevin turning on Cody absolutely was going to get cheered. I mean, you could see it in the fans when they teased it, the fans were just waiting for it to happen. So to do it in this scenario where the fans do not cheer Kevin and make Cody seem like he's not an over baby face. I think that that was very, very smart. Um, um, you know, it was one of those things where you you really learn from the modern fans because if in another era, it would not have gone this way. In this era, it will. And they figured that out. And I mean, I know that because I know from people who were there that they, you know, they understand that fans cheer happenings. Kevin Owens turning on, Cody Rhodes is a happening and they don't want they don't want that 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 crowd reaction since the turn already happened now they could really hate Kevin because they didn't see a happening but he, you know what I mean so it's a different situation still you know who knows they still may like Kevin but um you know it's it's um it was very smart I thought the, the doing it this way I mean traditionally you go why would you do the turn not in front of the audience. You know what I mean? It's like it's so much more effective in front of the audience, so much more effective in the arena. And in most cases, you'd be right. But this was the exception. And I thought that was a actually that was really freaking smart when I when I heard about them doing that. I go like, wow, they, they you know, because you knew it was going to happen. But it was like, man, they they averted the one because they were actually in tune with their or, or really thinking about the modern audience and not the audience of even five years ago. Or 10 years ago. So the show opened up with CM Punk and Drew McIntyre, Hell in a Cell, which was an incredibly bloody 30-minute violent match. Double juice. I mean, Punk bled you know, Matt, first. Matt, 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 McIntyre got busted up hard way, too. You know that. That was hard way? 
Wow. Well, CM Punk no, was definitely had, not had, hard work. He had, he had uh, a bunch of staples and everything. Yeah, yeah. Or right, two I mean, stitches or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, we had CM Punk bleeding like crazy. They used uh, they used tables. They used chairs. They used screwdrivers and all these other tools. They used the steel steps. And, man, this bloodthirsty crowd was going nuts for all this juice. And, yeah. uh, like I said, 30 minutes. And finally there at the end, Drew ends up going into the ring, and he brings out a bag. And it's beads, which actually got tremendous heat because, number one, it wasn't thumbtacks. And number two, it was beads. Yeah, Yeah, and people wanted thumbtacks bad. Yep. He he put some beads in uh, Punk's mouth, and he went for the Claymore, but he missed. And he just freaking hit the corner. He the corner of these steps with his back. It was just. Oh, I know. Absolutely brutal. I thought he'd land flat on the steps. That'd be fine. He did not. He landed on the edge. And then Punk wrapped a chain around his knee, put the beads in Drew's mouth, hit the GTS with the knee with the chain, and got the pin. This match was awesome. As far as a blow-off and a hell of a cell match, this was great. It was, it was an excellent match. The um, You know, it was, it was very, um, you know, a lot, lot, lot of blood, um, slow-ish. It was, I mean, like from the first five minutes, I knew they were going 30. Um, very deliberate. Um, and very... WWE in the sense of, you know, that, you know, they do the thing where you uh, hit your finish, roll out. It was interesting because um, they did, when Punk rolled out of the ring, they did boo. But for the most part, it, you know, it, I mean, Punk was was the baby face, but it wasn't really, they weren't really booing Drew that much. It was just, they were like into the match more than the, that dichotomy, although, you know, Punk was true more. Um, the other thing that I thought was interesting, you know, they do the thing where each does their finisher. Um, there was a rollout, you know, finisher, kick out, you know, w- one time. Um, and, um, you know, the tables and everything like that. It was a it was a very, um, I don't say by the book because they usually don't do blood, but it was a, it was exactly kind of like what I was, what I would have expected. Really, and, you know, really well done. I mean, they... Um, and yeah. it was 16 you know, staples. It was, it was the match of the show by far. Yeah, 16 staples in his head after yeah. that match. That's oh, brutal. So that's bad. That's from the toolbox. Yeah. So then we had uh, Nia Jax and Bailey. And I will be the first to say that I have put over Nia Jax of late. I think she's been a lot better recently. But, man, this was not that night. This okay, they, match. They had they had bad ideas. Oh, my and God. Bad ideas. And the bad ideas uh, were worse in execution than they probably were on paper, but they were bad ideas to begin with. The idea of the first one, which is the, you know, the idea of trying to have Nia Jax do a Hurricane Rana on Bailey out of, you know, out of the corner or whatever, you know, it's like who would have ever expected it? Um, well, the but, problem with that spot is, is Bailey goes underneath her and she's going to go for this, the walking power bomb, which she's done before. And yeah. she takes like two steps and Nia does a, Frankensteiner, and uh, Bailey takes this ridiculous bump. It's totally mistimed. It looks nothing like anything. And the announcers are like, they're at first they're completely confused. Like, what the hell just happened? Did she drop her? Did she fall weird? Like, what happened? And then Corey decides, you know, that might have been a Hurricane Runner or whatever. So well, what? the they idea, actually the showed a, the idea was a Hurricane Runner, but they Bailey actually the showed a replay of this. And it was even worse watching the replay to the point where the announcers had to admit that was horrible. Like they said something like uh, it wasn't pretty, but it was effective. I could not believe they showed a replay of this. So especially the the, the, the problem was it wasn't even okay. The idea of Nia Jax doing her Rana because she's so big and, and it would surprise people. I can see the mentality of let's really shock these people and make and also make people think Nia no, Jax I was is a great all right. worker. But the thing is, Bailey's trying to sell a move that totally missed looked so preposterous that it, it amplified the, the bad idea. So then on top of that, it's like, you know, there was a sunset flip bomb that was botched, and Nia kind of fell on Bailey's leg, and then there was a... I, th- I thought that she might have hurt her knee. There was again. a spot where uh, Nia tossed her into the barricade, which looked very dangerous. And so then they tried a uh, Samoan drop, and it looked like Bailey hit her head on the mat. And then Nia takes out the referee, which was—I com- mean, this was well, so, so ridiculous. So, 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 
Okay, the Samoan drops the Samoan drop spot. Uh, Michael Cole thought because Bailey landed like on her like it was like she reversed the Samoan drop into a leg slice. But I don't think that was the plan. No, that was not and the Michael plan. Cole, they botched a Samoan Michael drop. Cole, but Michael Cole called it like Bailey did the move, but then they sold it like Nia did the move, which, you know, again, made it, you know, it made the announcers look bad. But when Michael Cole was calling what he saw, but what he saw wasn't what they were planning. So they pretended that it didn't happen, basically. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.